Okay, let's take a look at how I'm generating uh, frame interpolated blends and using those to um, hide jump cuts, specifically on my face. And I very purposely have not rehearsed this or planned this, so I'm gonna do this with one of these cuts um, kind of live and we'll figure it out as we go. So let's take a look at the cut. This is me pulling a pencil out of the balloon I've done all of the other effects, so chin down looks great, but there's a very obvious pop on my face. Yeah, so balloon looks good, it's deflating, pencil's coming out, but check out my face, really bad pop. So let's frame through that. My face is basically still, and then, then there's giant pop where my expression's changing, the rotation of my head is going in you know, 3D space, so this is really difficult to blend using, um, you know, just images to hide things. You gotta like, there's rotation there, so it's really difficult. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take this composition and say new comp from selection. So now we have, um, basically this whole thing is just like nested in here. So let's go to the right time. So it's about 25 seconds, so it's right here. Okay, so that's the pop. And I'm going to make this composition 1080 by 1080, um, just so I can isolate the face. I don't wanna blend everything, why process that? Um, so I'm gonna make it a smaller composition and just focus on the face here. Just like that, and let's find that pop. Okay, so the pop is there. Let's just put a marker there for now. Okay. And I think what I wanna do, basically we wanna take a frame A and a frame B and then generate time between them. But we don't wanna take directly on either side of the cut because we can't, there's nowhere to add that. So you have to like go back a few frames and then forward a few frames and then redo that time in the middle. So I'm gonna go back three frames. So two, three, I'll take this frame here, let's put a marker there. We'll go to the cut, and may one, two, three, take this frame here. Okay, so we have frame A, frame B that we wanna blend. Okay, so from here we wanna export frame A as an image and frame B as an image. So let's take this one here, composition, uh, save frame as. And I'm gonna export as a PNG just because it's you know lossless, so okay. We'll give it a location. I'm gonna say frame A, okay, and then we'll go and we'll go to frame B and we'll export that. Save frame as, again, a PNG. And we'll call it frame B and we'll render out those two frames. Okay, from here, we're gonna jump into the internet and we're gonna go to uh, runwayml.com, Runway's website, and we're going to go into the, uh, if you have all the tools here, we're gonna go into frame interpolation, and we're gonna grab that frame A and frame B. Okay, so you can see frame A, frame B, and we're going to generate a clip from that. And I usually do about two seconds. So I'm gonna set it to two seconds, say generate, Okay, once that's done, you can see it's created a two second blend that is you know, calculating the rotation of the skull. It's morphing my expression in 3D space uh, and generally just much better than using you know, flat pieces to create that blend. Okay, so let's export, we'll call it blend. Doesn't matter, we'll do a 1080, export. Once that's done, you'll jump into the assets uh, blend right here, right click, download. Okay, save. Okay, let's jump back into After Effects and we can import that blend now. Okay, there it is, let's import it. Okay, so let's go to the project and this is where we need to blend that face. So let's go here and we'll add that blend in right here. Bring that video file up. And so it's two seconds, 
Um, we need to only use a few frames of it, um, but this is what you're gonna notice. Once you put that in here, uh, let's go to that frame here. Okay, there's the jump. Let's go to the first half and add my face in and start it right there. And I'm just gonna move it around until it matches here. Oh, it's one, two, three, three frames back. Okay, so this should, okay, there we go. So there, it's position matched here, turning it on and off. But you'll notice some of the colors are off, some of the brightnesses are off. So my shirt is changing, my face is going a little bit yellow. Um, so I'm going to go in and color correct this blend to match the original footage. I don't know why it does this, but it does, and this is what I have to solve. <laughs> so I'm go effect, uh, color correction, Lumetri color. Um, the first thing I'll do is fix the shirt. So I'll isolate that with curves. Um, we'll make it brighter. Hue versus Luma. Let's brighten up the shirt. That's pretty good. And it looks a little too blue. It's gotta go back to green. So let's go hue versus hue. Select it, make it a bit green. Okay, shirt's pretty good. Um, red is off in the balloon, but we're gonna be cropping that out. So let's look at my skin. Um, that's the original. I'm going a bit yellow. So let's hue versus hue that, the skin tone here. And let's pull that back to red. It's pretty good, but I'm going bright now. So I need to darken myself, uh, Hue versus Luma. Let's grab that skin tone and just darken a hair. Bring it back. That's pretty good. What's going on here? It's a little off, do I mind? I'm going a little dark, let's brighten it. Okay, maybe I need to uh, hue versus saturation, those yellows. Is that yellow in there? Let's bring that yellow down. Oh, that's pretty good, okay. Okay, that's good. So you can see I've color corrected that blend. So now we're looking pretty good. I don't really notice a difference. Okay, here we go. So let's put a marker on this cut. So let's hide the blend. Here's the cut. That's so bad. Let's put a marker there. So the theory is that we went three frames back, three frames ahead, and we created a blend. But now we have two seconds worth, um, and we only need to cover about four frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, let's turn this on, I'm gonna mask this face here. So I'm gonna create a nice soft mask around my face, my whole head, just go like this. Great, I'm going to feather that, maybe like 25 pixels, doesn't matter. Great, and I'm going to go to this cut and just go back two frames, one, two, and I'm going to isolate this blend to uh, a single frame. So that's one frame here, and I'm just gonna time slide it. And you can see I'm sliding that morph there, that blend, and I'm just gonna favor the start. So that's pretty aggressive. So I'm just taking a little bit of info from the start of this blend to just get my head over. That's feeling pretty good. I'll duplicate this, move it over. Um, and I'm gonna slide it even more. So that's pretty good. So this what it, that's what it's doing. Um, we'll worry about this hand afterward. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this again, bring it over. And here's the cut. This is the really ugly cut here. So I'm gonna slide this blend over even more. Maybe not as much. And just framing through. That's already feeling, you know, you can already feel 
that I'm animating through that cut. Let's do it one more. And just slide that over. It's kind of like I'm easing in now. That's feeling good. Let's watch it. Yeah, that works. Fantastic. Okay, so now we have this hand coming over. So obviously we need to uh, mask that out. So maybe, yeah, maybe here we can just use less. Uh, here it goes a little over. So I'm just going to do a, a subtraction mask because it's a rough mask. Come down here and just say subtract on that and feather that a bit. And last one, I just copy that mask over, paste it on there and use it there. Okay, let's check that out. Let's condense everything and watch this cut. Great, that feels really good. So just those four frames pulled from that two seconds of blend, uh, you know, cherry picking time to like ease in and ease out. Much better, watch, I'll turn them off. Look at that ugly jump cut pop on my face. <laughs> turn these on, watch it, blended, that easy. Great, and that is how you use uh, frame interpolation to blend jump cuts on faces. I just happen to use Runway. I think there's there are many uh, frame interpolation tools these days. After Effects might even have one built in. I just haven't explored it yet. And why I'm so excited is that I used to have to mask out the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and blend everything in 3D space. It took forever. But now I can just grab two frames, uh, generate that blend, and then cherry pick frames and it's done in a matter of minutes. So it's so, so easy now. Cool, thanks for checking this out. I hope this lesson uh, really helps. It really is kind of like a secret sauce of mine to, uh, to make jump cuts invisible. So hopefully you can use this technique to better hide your cuts.